Welcome to the Beyond Biopsychosocial Training Program. My name is Jeff Houck. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Dr. Kang, Philbrook, Jacobson, and Cuddyford. This module focuses on documentation and clinical decision making. We'll first cover T-scores as they relate to the U.S. average and percentile scores as they relate to the U.S. average. Then we'll categorize people based on severity levels and we'll finish with clinical benchmarks and how those relate to meaningful thresholds. A T-score is scores that have been scaled in a distribution where the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10. So let's use a normal distribution as an example. So if we had a T-score of 41, it was normally, normally distributed, our patient's score would be 0 0.9 standard deviations worse than the U.S. average. So if we use this approach just straight up, we would be able to enter in the patient's chart for physical function our patient's physical ability is 0.9 standard deviations worse than the U.S. average, or for self-efficacy, we could write our patient's self-efficacy of symptom management is 0.9 standard deviations lower than others managing chronic conditions. So now let's focus on percentile scores. Percentile scores allow us to know the relation of the score we obtained relative to others. Let's say we got a 41 this time for the self-efficacy of symptom management scale. And so the Percentile score for a 41 is around 24% of people managing chronic conditions. So we might put into the patient record, this patient's report self-efficacy of symptom management equivalent or better than 24% of people managing chronic conditions. So what we've reviewed so far is standard deviation units relative to the mean using a T-score, and then percentile scores with reference to their population. So let's use the physical function now relative to the U.S. population. So we could enter in a patient note. Essentially, the patients are equal or better than 24% of people in the population if they had a score of 41. The promise measures also allow for us to adjust for age and gender, and that's shown here for a T-score of 41. Notice that a T-score of 41 gives you some difference according to age. So essentially here what we can see is that a patient with a 50, for example, would and had a T-score of 41, would have physical abilities that were equivalent or better than 29% in the U.S. population as compared to a patient who's younger, who's maybe 40 years old, a T-score of 41, they would be equivalent or better than only 17% of patients in the general population. Gender-specific percentiles are provided here where for a female patient who has a score of 41, they would have physical abilities better or equivalent to 28% of the general population as compared to 20 for males. So how would we use all this information to document a patient's status in, a, in the e-record? I would encourage you to put something like patient reports physical function T-score of 41.9 standard deviations worse than the US average. This includes both the absolute value and then the variance from the U.S. average. The other option is to use percentile scores. And here you would just pick one. If you want to use the U.S. average, age adjusted, or gender adjusted. And that's really your choice. In this example, I'm just using the U.S. average. So the e-record entry would be patient reports physical function equal to or better than 24% of the people in the U.S. So here I'm using the gender adjusted score. So if I chose to use that, I would re record in the e-record patient reports physical function equal to or better than 20% of all males in the U.S. population. Let's consider a patient who's 53 years old that has a T-score of 36. But here we have our output from the algorithm. And we can see that 12% of the people in the U.S. have similar or lower scores, that 16% of people that are 45 to 50 year old have this similar score, and 10% of all males have a similar score. And what I've chosen to do is input the age-adjusted scores. So the e-record entry might read, patient reports physical function equal to or better than 16% of people of similar age. So now let's shift to a category of severity. And we can look here at the heat map. We can notice that within normal limits here is in green, mild in yellow, moderate in kind of this transitional orange-yellow, and then severe in the orange. 
so for physical function, we'll pay attention to the left-hand side of the screen. We note that a 45 to the highest score is within normal limits. And then from 40 to 45 is considered mild severity or mild limitation in physical function. And 30 to 40 is moderate limitation in physical function. And below that is severe. So below 30 is severe limitation in physical function. So let's shift to fatigue or the right-hand side of this chart. We notice now that more severity is a higher score and lower fatigue is a lower score. So green is lower and the orange is higher. So within normal limits would be a low score to around 55 or within a half standard deviation of normal. So that would be considered within normal limits symptoms of fatigue. And then 55 to 60 would be mild severity or mild symptoms of fatigue and 60 to 70 would be moderate symptoms of fatigue and then above 70 would be severe fatigue symptoms. So let's translate that into a patient note for a, a person who has a physical function score of 43, a fatigue score of 65, self-efficacy of 38, and satisfaction with participation in social roles of 40. So we notice that the physical function score of 43 lies between 45 and 40, so that's going to be mild symptoms or mild limitations in physical ability. And then the fatigue score of 65 is in the moderate range. And so this person has moderate symptoms of fatigue. So let's shift over to interpreting the self-efficacy and satisfaction with participation in social role scales. Now we can notice immediately that the, the categories are a little bit different. So now we have low average and high and we can kind of see that kind of spelled out here in this heat map and so essentially what we're going to say is 60 to 40 are average to high either self-efficacy or satisfaction with these two domains and that basically lower than 40 are kind of low to very low uh, satisfaction or confidence with self-efficacy. So if we look at our particular scores, we have 38 for self-efficacy, so that would fall in the low range, and then satisfaction with participation in social roles would fall in the average range. And so we could then enter into the patient chart those particular values. So if we based our entry in the E record on severity, we might document something like this. Patient reports with mild limitations in physical function, moderate fatigue symptoms, low self-efficacy of managing symptoms, and average satisfaction with social roles. Now let's shift to goal setting using clinical benchmarks. We can start with using the U.S. average and severity to set goals, then also use something called the patient acceptable symptom state or acceptable and unacceptable symptoms. And then finally, some data from orthopedic surgery. So if we want to use the US average, we might write something like this on our goals. Improve patient's physical function and fatigue to within a half standard deviation of the US average and self-efficacy to within a half standard deviation of others with chronic conditions. Recognizing the difference in the reference populations. Or we could use a severity scale and write improve patient's physical function and fatigue within normal range and self-efficacy to average or high levels. So here we highlight the clinical application of some research we've done using a question called patient acceptable symptom state. This yes no question allows us to understand whether a premise score is associated with an acceptable or an unacceptable level of symptoms and activity. And so we're going to apply this now to patient care. So the thresholds for physical function are one standard deviation worse than the U.S. average. And the thresholds for fatigue, self-efficacy, and depression are half standard deviation worse than the U.S. average. We can now apply this to a patient case. This patient has a physical function of 34, fatigue of 54, self-efficacy of 38, and satisfaction with participation in social roles of 42. 
physical function and self-efficacy are at unacceptable levels. Fatigue is at acceptable levels, and the satisfaction of participants in social rules is unknown. So in a patient record, we might write something like patient reports physical function and self-efficacy of symptom management levels patients find unacceptable. And a short-term goal might read improve self-efficacy of symptom management and physical function to acceptable levels. Another interesting area of research is the use of patient reported outcome or promise measures for pre-surgical clinical decisions. Here are some studies that validate the use of promised physical function, pain interference, and depression scores for pre-surgical decision-making in ACL participants. And here is a study that we performed in a varied group of foot and ankle patients considering surgery. In this case, the focus is on the physical function scale. So essentially what this is suggesting is that a pre-surgical promised physical function score of around 42 predicts people who are going to succeed with a focus on people who are above this scale have less likely to reach an MCID improvement because essentially they have less room to improve as a result of the surgery. And for people who are lower than 42, they have more room to improve and they, you know, as a consequence, experience greater improvement. So this encourages physical therapists to consider other alternatives when the scores are below 42 and discourage patients from seeking surgical options when their scores are above 42. So that concludes this module of the Beyond Biopsychosocial program.